This is the Barbecue Central Show podcast being generated from a live recording of the Barbecue Central Show, which airs at thebbqcentralshow.com every Tuesday between 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Show being brought to you by the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices. Visit them at thebbqguru.com or call them 800 800- 288-GURU. And by Tasty Licks Barbecue Supply, sauces, rubs, grills, smokers, everything for the outdoor chef. Visit them online at tastylicksbbq.com or call them 800-677-2882. And by Butcher Barbecue, manufacturers of premium injections, rubs, and sauces. Visit them online and take full advantage at butcherbbq.com. And by Stephen DeFranco Jeweler, official jeweler of the Barbecue Central Show. Visit them at stephendefranco.com or call 440-943-2700 and use keyword Barbecue Brother to receive all the discounts. And by Green Mountain Grills, one of the country's premier pellet grill manufacturers. Three different sizes to choose from, something to fit in every budget, and find out more by visiting greenmountaingrills.com. And by Cook Shack, the country's premier manufacturer of electronic and pellet-driven cookers, servicing the residential, commercial, and competition markets. Visit cookshack.com for more information. And by El Diablo Mustard. A few years ago, they wanted to turn ordinary mustard into the hottest shit on earth and dared to take spicy mustard further. They took fiery peppers, flaming spices to create flavors so powerful, so intense that even the devil couldn't resist. Find them at eldiablomustard.com and enjoy the bold flavors, great taste, and man, it's hot as hell. And by cookingpellets.com. Have a pellet fire cooker? Why not try some of the best pellets out there on the market today? Guaranteed to run in any cooker, and it's not voiding any warranties. You can purchase yours today at cookinpellets.com. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Good evening and welcome to the really big Barbecue Central Show. Uh, this is a show that talks about all things important in the world of uh, barbecue and grilling as I get my uh, microphone adjusted here. I apologize. Uh, we broadcast. Oh, that didn't work at all. We uh, broadcast live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of uh, Cleveland, Ohio. It's rapidly becoming known as the uh, barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday. If you uh, want to jump in on the show tonight, more than happy to have you join me. Two bits of contact information in case you want to do such. It is a phone call, 216-220-0966. You can also email the show, greg at the bbqcentralshow.com. Your two bits of uh, contact information should you want to jump in tonight. Everything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's happening. Let me uh, get my stuff up here on the board. Uh, Coming up in about 13 minutes from now, he is the pitmaster of Warren County Pork Choppers. Donnie Bray will be joining us. That's right. And then we switched gears. We didn't do a lot of it leading up to this particular race. And by race, I mean horse race. Usually, we hit this guy up twice previous to the last jewel of the Triple Crown, but I just got out of it this year after the misery and disappointment of the last few years. I took some time away, and here we go. Gang, in the midst of of potentially the first Triple Crown winning horse since 1978. I'll be joined by off-track, uh, off-track betting and thoroughbred racing expert Harry DeHorse at 935. 
Get your pen and paper ready in case you are looking to get down on the race. Harry always quick with some exotics, some standards, some boxes. Winners always guaranteed to give you at least the information you need to make an educated guess on picking up some extra cash dollar bills. Should you see fit to bet on the race? That would be the Belmont, by the way, in case you're not familiar with the horse racing scene. And then we'll move into the second hour. Uh, 10-14 will be a first-time guest to the show. Very interesting story. I think you're going to find it as interesting as I... Hold on a sec. Somebody's telling me the video feed is down. Let me see. Is the video is the video feed down? Somebody in the instant chat, just give me a quick holler. Just getting a black screen. Well, I don't know. Let me uh, go to the main website of the Outdoor Cooking Channel. I will survey this instance uh, myself and see exactly uh, what might be going. Now it just disappeared. Reboot, perhaps. I'll do just that. Yeah, big black screen. What is that? All right, well, let's try this. I will stop my broadcast, and then I will restart my broadcast. Let's see if that helps. Of course, people living on the audio side will have no problem with this. Uh, It's fine. It's fine. All right. Yeah, oddly enough, I don't see uh i don't see me on the thing either i don't know i restarted i re i've rebooted i guess you could say and is it is it is it bad now live and live all right good enough good enough that is weird though getting the same screen on all right well we're good to go uh, I think you're going to find this guy's story uh, pretty interesting. Could be one of the most elderly sauces, at least in Georgia, but uh, perhaps even the country. Uh, Roland Neal from Mrs. Griffin's Barbecue Sauce Company will be joining me. And uh, 1035 is currently open. So if you are uh, looking to jump in on the show tonight, you're more than uh, welcome to do that as well. Uh, 216-220-0966. You can also email the show, greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. There's what's happening. All right, uh, look, I ask you each and every week, please do me the favor, make a Facebook post or a tweet, send out one of those uh, group emails that I think everybody kind of started getting out of, the group emails. And get back into them. Just go right into the contacts list and do like, uh, what, what do you call it? Uh, compose all and then put links in the subject line and then send it out to your friends. Uh, if you think most of your friends like the audio stuff, send them over to my website, thebbqcentralshow.com. Otherwise, send them over to uh, outdoorcookingchannel.com, the video simulcast partner of the show for a number of years. Also, if you have Roku, we're on there as well. Check that out. Roku, got to love it. Find the Outdoor Cooking Channel in the App Store and then download it, and you can catch the live show just like that. Uh, don't forget, you can get all the replays here audibly by subscribing to the show through iTunes. You can subscribe to the show YouTube channel for video replays. Also, Outdoor Cooking Channel has replays, and then the website has all of uh, both replays, so never any reason you should miss anything on the show ever. By the way, speaking of shows, did you miss Whiskey Bent Barbecue in the Pit Radio? Shame on you. I believe scheduled appearances by Ronnie Cates, Michael McDearman, McD, friend of this show, and Danielle Domofsky, better known as Diva Q, also in. Caught the tail end of that uh, interview. And man, good stuff. Bringing the Energy, as always, <clears throat> was uh, Danielle Domofsky and uh, Chad doing a bang-up job now, I believe, three weeks in. If you haven't reviewed them for your pleasure, I will submit to you the top five in both the KCBS and FBA Team of the Year standings. 
And coming in at number one on KCBS is Warren County Porkchop, who we'll be talking to in just short minutes, or a few short minutes. Don't mean to abbreviate that. Uh, Number two, Darren Worth, Iowa Smokey D's. This guy coming out of nowhere, and can't wait to have him on again. Uh, David and Chris Qualls, American Dream Barbecue Team. Always consistent. Number four, Mike Wozniak and Kuau, Mike and Beth. And rounding out the top five, a team I have never heard of before in my life, Old Plantation Barbecue. Beautiful. Man, I'm getting just loaded up here with text messages. Can see you fine. Tell guys to refresh. Tell guys to refresh. See you just fine. All right. Also, it's up on the Roku feed for people watching. Now we switch over to the Florida Barbecue Association. Top five. Number one, he was there last year for most of the year until Matt Barber uh, got him right at the end. Uh, Jim Elser and Sweet Smoke Q. Speaking of current FBA team of the year, sitting in the second spot, Matt Barber and Hot Watch Hulas. The ever consistent as q is in the KCBS, you find him here in the FBA, is uh, Big Papa's Country Kitchen, Dana Hillis. Again, Mr. Consistency, and he's been team of the year a couple times in a row, past president Rob Bagby, Swamp Boys Barbecue, and of course, number five, really proving to be a consistent competitor in his own right, Get Our Smoked. I'd like to see the top five in the KCBS go up against the top five in the FBA in an epic sanctioning body throwdown that perhaps would dazzle the ages for years and months, well, <clears throat> for months and years to come. Maybe we should do that. Pit number one against number one, pit number two against number two. I mean, that pretty much probably happens depending on where in the country you are and, and what time of year it is. But that wouldn't be too bad. You do it twice a year. You see who's at the top six months in. You go to the end of the year and you redo it again. Jeff Elser, your uh, PR manager, is talking about how I need to get you in at uh, 1035. All right, gang, uh, let me talk to you quickly about Stephen DeFranco Jewelers. Father Day is coming soon, folks. What to get dear old dad? Uh, moms, daughters, if you're fans of the show and you're listening and dad isn't listening. How about new clothes that he won't wear? Probably a bad idea. How about new shoes that he'll just cover in barbecue sauce? How about a new tie? Never. Don't get him a new tie. Forget it. Stephen DeFranco Jewelers has the perfect answer. It's a new watch. And Steve has an incredible selection of watches that would be perfect for dear old dad. How about the Bulova line of watches? Why spend a ton of money on a watch if you don't have to? Bulova watches are stylish, affordable, starting under 200 bucks. Bulova watches come in traditional quartz styles and retro styles. Chronographs, skeletons are the traditional styles that fill out the Bulova line of timepieces. Now, how about the Precisionist? I have one of these. It's one of the most accurate watches in the world. Bolivar Precisionist is that watch. The exclusive movement of the Bolivar Precisionist breaks down secondhand movements into 16 segments per second, giving that secondhand a smooth, moving appearance. Steel and titanium versions are also available. Bolivar Accutron, I have one of these as well. It's the high end without the high price. Cadillac of the Bolivar line, the Accutron is the pinnacle of high end design without breaking the bank, starting below 600 bucks. The Bolivar Accutron watch gives you the high end style, quality, and lifestyle without breaking the bank. How about Citizen watches? You ever heard of those? Maybe you're a gadget junkie. Citizen is perfect for the gadget dad. EcoDrive technology converts light into energy, powering your watch perfectly and accurately. No need for barbecue timers because some of these Citizen watches have multiple timers along with alarms and multiple time zones. And then you have the cottage watchmaker of the bunch, Philip and Company. Many high-end European watch companies use Swiss movements called ETA. Philip hand assembles his watches personally using ETA movements Hand-picked components starting at $895. Phillips watches not only have an elegant European style, but they're affordable. All of Phillips watches are serial numbered and registered with Philip himself. All watches from Stephen DeFranco come with that exclusive watch performance package that includes one-year extension of the manufacturer's warranty, free engraving, free watch batteries for life, 
They'll even set the time. Free polishing cloth, shipping at no charge. Always forget about it. Visit the website, stephendefranco.com, or call Steve directly at 440-943-2700. That's 943-2700. And tell him you're a barbecue brother or sister. He'll give you the real discounted price of the new watch. Not allowed by manufacturer to give that up. We're back with Donnie Bray of Warren County Pork Choppers right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, we are back. Uh, For those who aren't getting... Hold on a second. For those who aren't getting the video for whatever reason, if you can't hear me, Uh, Head on over to the main website and just uh, link up the audio. Hit the uh, Windows Media or the uh, Quick Tunes or whatever, iTunes. Is that what it's called? Quick Tunes, iTunes. This portion of the Barbecue Central show brought to you by the Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour. 31 cities and $500,000 in cash to be won, plus eternal bragging rights forever. Next Sam event will be held this Saturday, June 7th at North Charleston, South Carolina. That is a local qualifier feeding the South Haven, Mississippi Regional Final, which goes down September 6th. Uh, To keep up with the tour or to register to compete, visit kcbs.us slash Sam's Tour. All right, uh, joining me now is the pit master of the team that came in second overall last year in the KCBS Team of the Year race. And one of the most hotly contested races in recent memory this year, he has stepped it up to a new level and is currently sitting atop the KCBS leaderboard and pretty much has been there since the jump street of 2014. So let's go ahead and race over to the hotline and welcome back friend of the show and pit master of Warren County Pork Choppers, Donnie Bray joining me. Donnie, how are you, buddy? Doing good. How about you? I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Donnie. Appreciate you uh, making time to join me tonight. And uh, I guess, you know, a couple different places that we can start here, uh, given the uh, great competition that took place at the end of last year, and you've jumped right out to the lead uh, team of the year here in 2014. But uh, perhaps before we get into, you know, the ins and outs of this season and, and what you're going to be forecasting till the end, uh, for the folks that don't know about Warren County Pork Choppers or your entrance into the competition barbecue scene, can you kind of revisit that just for a couple minutes and tell us how you got into that deal? Well, I've been into barbecue for quite some time. I did my first competition in 1989. Um, I didn't stay with it, um, but I kept I kept cooking. It's been a passion of mine. I actually took on a hobby of drag racing. I took the uh, took barbecue with it and just cooking for friends. And then uh, actually um, got back into it in 2006, I think. Um, well, actually, before that, I did a little bit of the uh, uh, the Memphis Barbecue Network. That wasn't quite my cup of tea. Uh, the on-site judging and things like that wasn't exactly what I wanted or what I was looking for. And then I had the opportunity to do a KCBS contest. Really loved the blind judging. Um, and I guess that was probably in 2006. Got a little bit of a taste, you know, just like anybody else. You get the first call, and, you know, you're trying to wonder what judges are looking for. And uh, the, the uh, passion for um, just, just trying to live some kind of competitive uh, hobby, uh, I seen real quick once I started understanding the judging process to where that was that fueled my fire. And uh, it's just every day I try to improve. And uh, last year I had a – I had a really good year, and uh, I learned a lot sparring with uh, the best there, Tim Grant, for all year. And uh, I think that it tuned me up to uh, for me to be the best that I could possibly be for 2014. So I'm putting a lot of effort into it, but there's a lot of good cooks that's coming on fast. So I don't know how long I can hang on, or I just try every, every week. I cook every week, no matter what. Donnie Bray joining me here on the show, pitmaster of Warren County Pork Choppers. Uh, Danny, if I could back up just uh, for a second, and you know, when you talk about 
the Memphis Barbecue Network, and, and you tried your hand at that. Um, they do have some blind judging. They do have the on-site judging. You know, from a, a perspective, because Memphis in May had just passed here a couple weeks ago, uh, Chris Lilly and uh, Big Bob Gibson take that uh, for a record fourth time. Uh, do, do you have any uh, interest in, like, getting back into into maybe that competition or, or trying to cook that competition specifically or just steer away from that style altogether? No, actually, the Memphis in May, uh, a good friend of mine, um, Chad Hayden with Moonswiners. I don't know if he was joking or not, but he said that me and him ought to partner up and do Memphis in May sometime. And um, I, I definitely, you know, with that, it, it sort of inspired me to want to do uh, uh, that particular cook-off. Um, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with the method of KCBS. I doubt I'd ever jump ship as far as chasing points, but uh, he sort of lit my fire a little bit. Hopefully he wasn't just teasing me, but uh, that might be something that, that me and some of the KCBS uh, teams attempt at some time. Chad Hayden, of course, a former Jack Daniels grand champion as well. So uh, a a formidable cook to join forces with, no doubt about it. Uh, All right, Donnie. So as we kind of look back uh, at the first six months of the year, obviously it takes a little while for the KCBS competitions to start ramping up as you work through. Uh, I don't know if there's even hardly any in January, February. There's very few, and but you know more and more as the year wears on, you start to see more and more start to pop up. How do you evaluate you know those first four or five months uh, as the season has unfolded for you guys? Well, I you know I didn't know uh, I really didn't know what to expect. I was uh, I was a little bit let down, you know that I, I I went I traveled the world over trying to seek one point and couldn't seem to get it last year with that tie. Um, so what that two week off season, I guess that we get, I mean, NASCAR gets a couple of months. They whine about it. We get a couple of weeks. Um, I, uh, you know, I just sort of said to myself, I'm gonna go out and do the best that I can do. And I'll let the cards, you know, just fall where they lay. If I can come out of the gate strong, then I'm going to stay with it. If I, if I, if I fail or fall backwards, uh, you know, maybe I won't cook as much, but uh, heart and soul being put into it went to uh, Lakeland, Florida. Uh, as you know, whatever that is, 75, 80 teams um, won that. And uh, it just seemed like that the, the flavor profiles that I took, which was a good level cook with all four meat categories, just seemed to pay off. Um, now it's getting harder for me as everybody else is sort of putting that effort into it, especially my good friend, Scott Smith with Q and Stewart and Bruin and, and Darren, you know, all, all those guys, they, they got everything it takes. Um, I never let, you know, Q out. He's, he's coming strong and trying. There's a lot of people that's going to be, that's going for this. Uh, I think the, the race is probably, uh, for everybody watching, I believe this year will be just as good, and, and there will be a lot of things to, to look forward to toward the end of the year because everybody's just now getting ramped up to run over me, and I'm, I'm running as hard as I can. You know, obviously you'd mentioned some great teams. You have Darren Worth just behind you in second place who was very experienced competition. Cook was in probably uh, one of the, the most heated races prior to the one that you and Tim took on last year when he was up against Rod Gray and Steve Farron. Uh, I believe it was, uh, you know, four or five years ago. Um, and then you have, you know, a, a newcomer of sorts on the KCBS circuit and David Qualls or David and Chris Qualls there, the American Dream Barbecue team. Um, you know, I have kind of a personal interest in tracking him, but I see him and his contest results, and he seems to be either winning or getting a reserve grand championship every time he's coming out now. You know, when you're on the top, let me rephrase this. When you're looking to get to the top, it's, uh, you know, the bullet is always or the target is always on somebody else's back when you're at the top the target is on your back so do you feel every time you're going out to cook every weekend that there's maybe just a little bit of added pressure to you to a stay at the top and and kind of stave off these teams that are looking to take your top spot Uh oh definitely i see it every week and uh you know if i anybody that that finishes ahead of me usually they uh they're there to tell me about it you know it's (laughs) It's it's good clean uh, good clean fun, but um, yeah, I'm definitely nervous every week. Uh, for the last two or three, maybe three weeks, I've struggled a little bit in chicken. Not that I don't feel my recipe is right there, but uh, had some issues with uh, with uh, actually the chicken itself. I've just switched brands, 
and uh, I hope that I that I fix that this week. But uh, three good calls and then uh, and then falling short with one category will never keep you in the lead. And I and last week I actually did not gain any points. Uh, I, I I don't have enough lead to do that very much, or um, you know it, I'll, I'll just get put to the wayside. Donnie, you mentioned a couple things that I wanted to hit on. I guess, at A, when you see some scores start to fall off just a little bit, and obviously through the time I've talked to pit masters, they say, you know, you never make rash decisions just off of one cook. But, you know, as you go through a cook, two, three, or four, and you start to see, as you'd say, uh, maybe chicken scores start to fall off or maybe a brisket score start to fall off, how do you tinker or tweak the flavors in order to try and get those scores back up to where you think they should be? Well, the, the best thing anybody could do, and, you know, basically if you if anybody's took a class, they're, they're getting uh, information that worked, and then if it works for you, what, what we do as cooks, we, we sort of to bear off of that just a little bit, just a conversation with your buddy. You know, you could, uh, just like me and chicken, I'll, be, I'll share that with you. I feel like that uh, uh, I'll give everybody a tip. I, I cook legs, and legs has a, a tendency for the, the skin to pop, and that magic temperature is actually the magic temperature that it tastes the best. So taking the easy route, as we are creatures of habit, I uh, started pulling that temperature back to make that a little bit easier cook, and I think I lost texture. Um, we always talking about too much sauce, trying to pull sauce back. I think I pulled that back too far. So the tweak is just read your notes, go back, and actually get back on the program that actually worked, and and try not to reinvent the wheel. I do have uh, rubs that I've been playing with that a friend of mine has sort of turned me on to, and I I practice chicken. Uh, actually this Sunday when I got back and I rarely have time to practice because I cook every week, but, uh, my trailer didn't, didn't stop. I had another fire going in it, trying some, uh, not saying that I would be able to, uh, bring that into my program, but, uh, what I will do this next coming week, knowing that I do need some points extremely bad is I'll go right back to my notes and I'll bring that temperature up for texture and I'll, uh, I'll probably not thin that sauce as much, just trying to get it back to where it's got a good pop. Um, the things that the judges can't turn down is sweet, heat, smoke, and salt. And as long as you can get that on the end of the product, and with along with a great texture cooked till it's actually perfectly done, you know, you, you're going to get a call. It may not be a winning call, but if you get four of those, next thing you know, you just got a grand. So I'll uh, keep it simple, and I'll go back to my notes and, Hopefully that answered your question is what uh, what my strategy will be for this co- next coming weekend in Bardstown, Kentucky. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing that you mentioned, and you know, six or seven years ago when I first started the show, it, it would be a question that I would have never asked because I don't even know if anybody was really thinking about it, is the choice of purveyor or the choice of uh, seller of the meat seems to become so specialized now where it is breaking everything down to what kind of brisket you're going to get and what manufacturer the chicken or producer of the chicken you're going to get and so on with the pork so on with the ribs you know before it used to be you just go to sam's club you load up everybody kind of had the same stuff and you're off and cooking and may the best man win but it seems to be so specialized in the meats now do you find that to be the case more and more that people are really trying to nail down special chicken producers and rib producers and brisket producers and so on Oh, oh, definitely. And, and I think that the people that, that are doing the best are actually uh, being consistent. So in other words, if you buy a rib and you like it, and like myself, I, I really like a, a real fatty rib. And with that said, I need to cook that each week because if I get a lean rib one week, it's gonna the timing's going to be different, the temperature's going to be different. So when you get somebody that can supply good meat to you, you need to stay with them for multiple reasons. And, and one of the most is just uh, buy the same thing every week and cook it the same way. Donnie Bray is the pit master of the Warren County Pork Choppers barbecue team, warrencountyporkchoppers.com, the website if you want to check it out here while we're talking. Uh, Don, you know, I've interviewed pit masters right around this time of the year when they've uh, been successful for those first six months. And a lot of top pit masters would say, 
you know, it's good to have those first six months under your belt, but it's the next six months that are really going to determine the winner. And if you see some teams that maybe even aren't on the radar right now, all of a sudden will pop up here over the next three, four, five months. As you look forward, uh, or perhaps uh, maybe this is even a better question, when you were sitting down to build out the competitions that you were going to be doing this year, how do you take into account which ones you're going to do? Is it always about ones that you think are going to have you know, 50-plus teams? Are there ones that you're going to do no matter what? How do you go about trying to give yourself the best shot at laying out a initial schedule to get you that team of the year uh, hump? Well, I'm, I'm going to back up to the first part of that that you said. Um, you know, uh, the, the second half of it, it really separates the men from the boys. And I heard that uh, on your show, and Rod Gray said it last year, and I was – all ears trying to figure out everything that I needed to do to uh, try to get as many points as I could. Um, but it, it's going to, it's going to change it uh, drastically. There's a lot of people that hadn't got as many cooks. There's some people that hadn't even got 10 cooks. So they're going to be coming extremely strong. Uh, and, and where we, where we land uh, who's to know right now it's not enough for me to be uh, my my grands are um, 300 points uh, or, or close to so that that's a good good thing for me but right now I'm not searching just for the 50 team competitions I'm uh, actually uh, just sort of cooking where I want to right now but if I can if I can stay in there I'll be trying to fight to uh, to get those 50 team competitions all right, Donnie. So as you look forward here over the next, uh, you know, five six months, or you know, whatever's in the the calendar year for uh, this particular competition season, uh, is it every weekend uh, all the way till uh, till the end, uh, or will there be some time off? Or do you feel like at this point, because of where you are, you really can't afford to take a weekend off? Well, I'm going to take one weekend off. I have a class I'll be giving in July, uh, so and one in September. Those are the only ones that I plan on. Well, Fourth of July, but I just made. Uh, well, I finished third in Sam's, and I didn't uh, choose to carry on through uh, because that would be two competitions. Hopefully, I don't know. I heard they may be for points, but I didn't. I chose not to go through. You got a you got an intruder in the house there, Donnie, or what? Uh, I got one once in the barn. That's what's happening. <laughs> Aha, I knew it. Um, all right, so um, do, do you have, or, or as you look at the teams uh, that are sitting kind of nicely, you know, I'll use a, a horse race term, they're kind of stalking you at the moment. Uh, is, is there one particular team or, or two particular teams that uh, unnerve you more than another, or do you treat them all the same and, and try and bat them back as best you can? Um, I, I don't. You know, I, I don't unnerving. I, I don't know that any of them do that. There's a lot of them that that really scare me. Uh, you know, it's nothing to say that I'm supposed to be where I'm at. You know, this is anybody's game. Uh, I, I just got real close and couldn't close a deal last year. So, um, I, you know, I want it really bad. But uh, Scott Smith, being such a good friend, we we usually on Friday night nights competitions were together uh, and he's such a good cook and he's just right there i know that uh that darren uh from what i've heard i've talked with him a little bit but i didn't you know i think his uh, restaurants and things are going to where he uh doesn't have to be there he can put more time into it so i worry about that quite a bit but you know it is just barbecue and uh you know, I do have a very nice and blessed with a good day job but for a fun hobby i'd, I'd sure like to uh I'd sure like to be able to at least walk on the stage this year. So uh, whether or not how high up that'll be, I don't know. But I will fight just to stay uh, in the competition. Um, but, you know, what changes it is if you have a few weeks of, uh, you know, bad rolls. Uh, I won't mention bad tables. I feel like that, uh, <laughs> that I hadn't got where I needed to be the last uh, three weeks. But I won't blame it on the table. Uh, I know that's that's real easy to do, but uh, I've actually seen where I feel like it was my fault and the product that I took's fault. Um, but you get that, uh, you know, a few weeks, and next thing you know, you know, you, you can drop very, very, very fast. All, and we know what one point could cost you. Uh, and right now in this game, everybody's getting um, a lot of a lot of points. I think there's some of the teams that's out west that still hadn't got their 10. So they're going to come up very fast. I think that uh, 
you know, first, second, and third right now has got some really good numbers laid down. But, uh, you know, some of those people that hadn't got their 10 yet, they could be dropping some 300-point changes on us. And, man, that changes, the, that changes the game quick. No doubt about it. Donnie Bray is the pitmaster Warren County Pork Choppers currently sitting atop the KCBS Team of the Year points race uh, halfway through it. Donnie, always appreciate the time. Continue success. We'll do it again soon. Yes, sir. Glad, glad to be on there. It's a wonderful show. Thank you. There he is. Donnie Bray, ladies and gentlemen. Warren County Pork Choppers. Dot com. If you want to uh, check out some of his notes, news, uh, you want to pick up some of the gear like I got, the Pork Chopper U shirt, which I'm sure people that will be attending his class in July will be getting. I'm sure that class is sold out like hotcakes. Uh, nobody more successful than he is right now in the competition trail. Uh, before we get to Harry the Horse, let me talk to you quickly about the longest running sponsor of the show located in Warminster, Pennsylvania, the Barbecue Guru Who. In two weeks' time, Barbecue Bob Trudnack will be joining the show to go over the new party queue. Soon to be released, by the way. If you're thinking about automatic pit temperature control devices, this is the company that you need to consider. Don't start thinking about other people, any of that. No way. Just stop it already. Stop it already, if you will. These are the people that started it all. If you're not familiar with how these little beauties work, I'm not going to get into the minute detail, but imagine a product that allows you to maintain a set temperature all the way through the cook. Sound too good to be true? It's not. It's real-life technology. It's happening today. You can be a part of it. If you're a busy working professional like me, or perhaps you are constantly on the run with kids doing errands, and you just don't have time to set around and tend pit temperatures. I get it. I'm there. Really. The guru allows you to throw on a pork butt or a brisket or a couple slabs of ribs, and then you're off to do whatever it needs you get done. And the barbecue guru maintains the temperature you set it at. Currently a number of different models to choose from. As I just mentioned, we're going to be talking to Bob Trudnack in a couple weeks about the new party queue. Bumps up in price a little bit to $149. But once you see the adjustments and how this thing fits your cookers, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Do yourself a favor. Head on over to thebbqguru.com. That's thebbqguru.com, and check out their products. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call them directly, 800-288-GURU or 800-288-GURU, and they'll make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you up and running right out of the box. Again, that's 800-288-GURU or the website thebbqguru.com. The Barbecue Guru, a breakthrough in barbecue technology. Let's get our horse on coming up out of the break. Get your pens and pencils. Take down notes. you have any questions, shoot them my way. I believe, if we are lucky enough, Harry the Horse will make his triumphant return back to the barbecue jungle right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right, welcome back. 216-220-0966. You can also email the show, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. Uh, joining me now, somebody who is uh, always changing locations, uh, but I am sure that at this stage of the game, we're uh, almost well into the middle of the week for what is going to be the biggest race this season to date, horse racing, of course. Uh, we welcome back friend of the show, Harry DeHorse, the uh, horse racing expert here of the show. Harry, how are you, buddy? No, just anything diet would be good. Uh, good evening, Greg. How are you? Uh, absolutely fantastic to have you once again, Harry. It's been a while. Well, it um, has been. And I, 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 I'm so flattered that you'd have me back on the show. It's great to be here. Uh, Harry, it's been uh, really my error this year. Uh, we've had you on uh, for the last number of years. We uh, lead up to uh, now what is the Belmont with the other two jewels of the Triple Crown, the uh, first one, of course, uh, the Kentucky Derby. Then you have the Preakness in the middle. Uh, last year soured me a little bit. Uh, we didn't have 
really a consistent uh, winner going from one to the next in hopes of a triple crown this year a little bit different uh, we have uh, what is california chrome looking to do what no horse has done since 1978 when a hefty affirmed with stevie coughlin aboard uh, was able to tag that prize uh, from your view on this particular horse right now how does california chrome fit the bill as a potential triple crown winner well, you know, Greg, uh, every year uh, I come across as being hopelessly and romantically, uh, you know, optimistic about who's going to who's going to be the next big one. You know, we, we, we we've we've gone through a number of years <clears throat> where we've had some close ones. You know, we had the Big Brown, we had Smarty Jones, we had Funny Side. You know, we had all these great great contenders, but they couldn't win the big one. I will tell you that I have looked very carefully at this at this at this horse. Uh, aside from his connections, which I think are you know very genuine people, I I will tell you that as as we look at uh, as we look at California Chrome here in the morning, me and the boys, I, I think, pardon the expression, I think it could be the one. Uh, I, I have not seen an equestrian specimen of, of this caliber in, in, in many, many of my years. And as you know, I have been following this game a long time. Uh, every, every year, as you know, we have a triple crown hopeful heading to the Belmont. Uh, and we hear a lot of chatter about how the triple crown winner will save the game. Uh, some such talk. Uh, but I believe with this, this is this horse is a superstar. Harry, let me ask you something because, in terms of racing, and I, I don't want to get too intricate for uh, some of the barbecue folks here, but uh, we've had, as you had mentioned, a, a good couple runs of getting two out of three. But once they reach the Belmont, there's a few different things that happen. A, uh, maybe they don't get a good trip, uh, but B, uh, in my very uh, short life following this game. It seems that once you get to the top of the stretch in the bull ring, uh, where most uh, horses and, and jockeys and people would think, okay, we're we're just seconds away from the finish line. It's almost like there's a whole other hour to the race that has to be taken from the top of that stretch down to the finish line. And it doesn't seem that the horses have that finishing power. So do you see a finisher in California Chrome at the bull ring? Well, excellent, excellent analysis. And you're right. I've, I've talked to uh, some of the best riders and trainers in the business over the years, Greg. And, you know, it, it, when they come to the top of the stretch, whether it be at, at uh, Churchill Downs, whether it be at Mammoth Park, or Santa Anita, even the great Saratoga, they think the race is almost over. It, it, takes, a special, it takes a special horse that can look at that stretch and say, I got, I've got that much more to go and I've got that much more in the tank. The rider has got to be precise in his conduct at that point in time in a race. I, I would look back, you know, I go back many, many, many more years than yourself, you know, to the affirmed and the Seattle slew and to the secretariat and, and well beyond. Hell, I go all the way back to Sir Barton in 1990, 1919. I, I'm only kidding about that. By the way, can you hear me okay? It's kind of crowded in the rest. Yeah, sounds like there's a, a great time being had by all behind you. Uh, yeah, nobody will buy me a drink. So anyway, uh, to, to answer your question, I think if you look at the pedigree of this animal, he's got three Triple Crown winners in his history. There is a breeding here in this animal that not only is for speed, he has breeding for strength and distance. I, I, I you know, I will save my prediction until the end of my interview. But, you know, when you look at just this, this horse's legs, his hocks, his all of the specimen he, he's built for speed and his marriage with the jockey is as good as i've seen with any contender harry there's a big thing going on uh at least in the chat room here and i've seen it run up uh, i've actually talked to my father about it a couple different times uh, never in the past in any of the favorites uh, or not in the favorites uh, you hear about the use of lasix before races uh, you know certain other things this year in California Chrome, there's been a request which has been granted for, I guess, what would be a horse-sized breathe-right strip to go across the nostrils 
Um, you know, what insight can you lend to that? And are we potentially looking at an Asterix Triple Crown winner? Should he pull it off come the Saturday? You know, that's a great question. And and I think it comes uh, from the media who has no concept of what the the true uh, state of the uh, uh, the competition of horse racing is all about. You look at it this way. You look at the you look at the football players. You look at people who are trying to get a better night's sleep. They wear these little these little bandages on their noses. I I I, <clears throat> I don't wear those, but I know they use it to help them breathe correctly. Uh, as far as California Chrome is concerned, if any other of the trainers would like to put a nose patch on their horse, they're perfectly they and, and have been perfectly able to do so. The people from the New York State uh, <clears throat> Racing Association uh, m- made a decision that I think was the appropriate decision. There is no medication in that breathing apparatus. It is strictly a nose breathing apparatus that simply goes across the horse's muzzle, helps him, brings out the, the, the lifts up the muzzle, opens the nostrils. It's a breathing. Th- Any horse could do it. Any trainer could do it. Uh, do I think it's a big enough advantage for the horse to win the race? Well, no. Uh, I think the other horses are going to have to. They're going to have to be chromy on their own. Nose patch or no patch. If if New York State, just to summarize, if New York State would have said no patch, I still think Chrome could have beat this field. And just to be clear, as far as you know, if any other horse wanted to use a, a similar breathing strip, they would be more than in their means to ask, and one would be granted. Absolutely. Why not? Absolutely. All right, just to make sure that we're all on the same page here. All right, Harry, so but, everybody... But, but let me, let me yes, just, go let me ahead. Just add, add this one thing. Uh, uh, thoroughbred racehorses are, uh, are very much creatures of habit. Yeah. They don't like change. And it doesn't mean that adding to another horse or taking off of chrome, I mean, that, that's a, that could be a big enough deal just to upset the animal one way or the other. It's like changing a riding blanket. It's like changing blinkers on, blinkers off. Horses don't like change. Harry DeHorse joining me here on the show, breaking down the upcoming uh, Belmont Stakes. It'll be taking place on Saturday. So Central Lights always wanting to win a little extra cash to go spend on barbecue gadgets and potentially if they hit it big enough on an exotic, perhaps a new a trailer grill or something like that. Um, what are you looking at prediction-wise and uh, maybe some, some value bets and, and some uh, maybe more uh, risque bets? Well, <clears throat> yeah, be- before I get into my, my, my suggestions for the good fans, uh, just a, a little bit of attention to pay to our event that's going to take place at El Monte here on Saturday. Yep. There, there are going to be five, count them, five great one races that day. Wow. Uh, well, yeah. And one of those races is going to be for Phillies, uh, and it's the Ogden Phipps, $1 million of added money. And uh, uh, the fans are going to be treated to seeing Princess of Silmar, Beholder, and Close Hatches. These horses, this is the best three fillies in in the world that are going to be running on the same card as the Belmont. I would draw your attention to that particular opportunity for a trifecta if the fans want to make some money. Now, for the big race, uh, I I heard uh, later today that uh, Kid Cruz and possibly uh, Social Inclusion may not be running in the race. Uh Uh-oh. That's something I would just give you people as a, you're, 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 you're very good fans and wonderful people, but generous people. Just something to consider tomorrow when they look at the racing form of the DRF to see if social inclusion or kid crews are going to be in a race. That changes everything if they're out. But uh, I think we're safe to say that California Chrome is going to win this race. No value there. But... I would like to. I would like to suggest that they might want to put uh, California Chrome on top over Ride On Curlin and Wicked Strong. Now, here's the trick bet. God forbid Chromey doesn't win. Okay, but you might want to take half your bet, maybe only fifty dollars, and put Wicked Strong, Ride On Curlin on top, and Chromey to come in second. God forbid that should win but I think it's going to be a good place to put your your second bet. 
All right, so uh, for those that uh, get this show on podcast or you just missed it, uh, don't forget you can get all the replays of the show soon after the show uh, ends Li- uh, ends airing live. Uh, we're talking with uh, Harry DeHorse, who is uh, in Elmont, New York, as we speak. Uh, any other uh, parting thoughts here, Harry, before uh, we turn you loose and then look forward to the run of Chrome on Saturday? Yeah, you know, you know well, as I said before, well, there's little doubt that the focus of the afternoon is going to be whether or not Chromey wins the Triple Crown. Uh, you know, I would just like to say that there's going to be $8 million worth of purses. Please, for those of you who can't get to the track, for those of you who can't get to the simulcast, please do us a favor. Tune in. Support this wonderful sport. It's, it's, it, I think if we have a triple crown winner here, this could be a tremendous, a tremendous thing for this great industry and this great sport. And, Greg, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to come on the show tonight. And, uh, and, and do me a favor, please. Give my very, very best to your beautiful family. Absolutely. Uh, Harry, will you be around the spa uh, this coming August? Well, of course, uh, we plan to be there for a couple of weeks. I hope we can have a chance, you and I, to get together at uh, one of our favorite drinking establishments and have a have a cocktail. Eh? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll be in touch. Uh, I do have plans to get out there, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I give to you, Harry DeHorse. There he is. Thanks for coming on, Harry. Harry DeHorse live uh, from Elmont, New York, uh, breaking it all down. So. Uh, he feels specifically that California Chrome is definitely going to win. He does have the ability. Look, uh, I want to say fool me once, fool me twice, but uh, we've been in this position before, and I have been so hopeful that lest I was f- uh, four years old the last time we had a Triple Crown winner and affirmed. We can at least see one here in my lab. I mean, I got a feeling that if it doesn't happen now, it might as well never happen. It very well could never happen. And according to Harry, forget about the breathe right strip on the horse. That's not going to do anything. Everybody has the opportunity to put one on. And by everybody, I mean horses. So the playing field is fair. Don't bring that noise to this show next Tuesday if California Chrome is the new Triple Crown winner. Or the newest Triple Crown winner. Talk about new. Let's talk about El Diablo Mustard, the newest sponsor here at Barbecue Central. El Diablo was born a few years ago when it's created. uh, Tomorrow I will uh, learn how to read, absolutely. When its creators wanted to turn ordinary mustard into the hottest on earth, they pushed the boundaries while adding fiery habanero, Roasted chipotle, flaming jalapeno, spicy mango into mustard. So powerful, so hot, so intense that even the devil couldn't resist. And El Diablo was born. El Diablo features six bold flavors that taste great and are hot as hell. Mango is a bit of island heat meets sweet with real mango puree and a slow tingling heat. How about roasted chipotle? Adds a kick of southwest with a peppery mustard and smoky chipotle puree for a nice slow heat. Steakhouse adds hearty flavor with some zing of Worcestershire, tangy tomato, blazing layers of flavor. How about Texas chili? Makes any hot dog an instant chili dog with hints of garlic, cumin, and paprika. And heat. Watch out. Jalapeno. Pops with real jalapeno puree and a mustard zing. Try it on some hot bacon. Add habanero. Rounds them out. It's a flavor inferno for you daring types that want all heat all day. So get grilling and some heat to your meat. Connect on El Diablo's Facebook page for recipe tips and giveaways, bold flavors, great taste, and hot as hell. Just to that point, uh, on this roasted chipotle mustard, had a little uh, regular blue box mac and cheese. Last time I added uh, the jalapeno to it. This time I added roasted chipotle. And let me tell you something, depth of flavor to class up the basic blue and uh, yellow box of the Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Also, did a little steakhouse dabbling on a cold cut sandwich over the weekend. If you're not going to eldiablomustard.com, you're not trying hard enough to realize that there is actually different options of mustard out there to bring unique flavor profile and zing to your mouth. And by zing, I mean some heat. You know, if you're a pansy, you might not want El Diablo. If you're a man's man, eldiablomustard.com. 
Uh, we're coming back to wrap up the first hour right after this. Maybe we can resolve a, a video situation. I'm not sure. You can always go to the audio portion of this show. It's right there on the main website, right there at the top right. Connect right there. Many people are doing it right now to the tune of 133 live connections. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Stick around. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. 216-220-0966. Dave Bosk of Butcher Barbecue getting crazy love in the chat room. You're not going to hear any uh, contradictions from me about some of the best damn brisket you ever make with his injections. Absolutely. Agreed and agreed. Thanks to Harry DeHorse, last segment, giving you a uh, $50 bet. I don't know if I would call it the value bet per se, but uh, the more uh, maybe unpopular one that won't show California Chrome winning showing him into the second place. Uh, you can bet California Chrome to win, and I believe you'll have to pay $6 after you collect your winning ticket because the odds are going to be crappy all over the place on that. Uh, you can also take uh, California Chrome over a few if you like to do, uh, wheel it up a little bit. As he said, uh, take part in this wonderful weekend Take in, if you haven't watched a thoroughbred race in two or three or four, maybe you've never watched a thoroughbred race, you found it to be ridiculous. Take the time this weekend to check it out. See what you think. Be part of potential history. I mean, what's the worst thing that happens? You tune in a little bit late. You take two and a half minutes out of your life to watch the horse fall flat on his face. And uh, if, by goodness, the best thing ever happens where the horse wins... You'll be part of That'll be the where were you moment you've been waiting for. Where were you? When California Chrome was the first horse since 1978 to win the Triple Crown. I mean, you do realize, of course, that in 77 and 78, there were back-to-back -back Triple Crown winners. And those back-to-backs dried it up for everybody after that. 77 Seattle Slough, 78 affirmed. Anybody after that, pound salt and beat it. You are going out. Let's hope that uh, California Chrome has it in them. All right, we are going to uh, wrap the first hour here. When we come back, we have a huge second hour planned. I'm going to be giving away some of my own thoughts and opinions on some backyard cooking that people have asked me uh, over the course of the week, asking me how I mix stuff, things like this. Uh, you will be able to jump in as well, should you see fit. So thanks again to uh, Harry DeHorse for what is always a epic segment, and I love the fact that you know, he is willing to take that phone call in the midst of, I mean, you see that guy. I mean, he's been up and down the road a little bit, but he's not one to shy away from a party, if you will. So for him to uh, pick up the phone, make that call, and uh, it's my sincere hope that uh, we'll be running into each other when we hit up Saratoga Springs, New York, there first part of August as we uh, take in our own thoroughbred racing and uh, visit the family up there. All right, uh, we're backing out. Uh, you want to jump in? More than happy to have you. 216-220-0966. You can also email the show with any questions that you have at any point. Greg at the BBQ Central uh, I'll try and uh, reload this video thing. Should, uh, should I try? Anybody out there uh, tell me if the video's up or not? You tell me. 
but we'll uh, give it a workout here. We'll see what happens. All right, you're listening and watching potentially the barbecue show of Barbecue Central right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> you have a great show, I'm a big fan. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono! It's all about the Charbono, dude! Succulent fish, what? He ate 54 wieners. But listen, Lavernius, shake a face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Ooh. Top men. All right, just like that, we're into the second hour. That's right. All right, well, uh, this usually doesn't happen, but... Uh, We'll uh, go ahead and uh, race over to the hotline and uh, see who is uh, area code 702 joining the show. Name and where you're calling from. Jeff Elser, Las Vegas, Nevada. Jeff Elser, better known as <laughs> PR extraordinaire for his brother Jim Elser. Jeff, how are you, bud? I'm good. I am PR for Sweet Smoke Q. No doubt about it. What can I do for you tonight, buddy? I was just calling in to say what's up, man. I was pretty mad I missed out on uh, athlete or porn star last week or two weeks ago. Well, uh, you know, if if I, I always say if there's two things that a man has to be on point with is athletes and perhaps more importantly, porn stars, because you never know when you're going to need to be armed with that information to win succulent prizes. I, I agree. I agree. And I should have known to go with back-to-back porn stars. All right, uh, Jeff, you've conned me into it. Do you want to play another uh, game to see if you can redeem yourself with uh, athlete or porn star? Let's do it. I think I got the question and the answer. All right. you have. <laughs> well, I think I have the questions, um, but we'll have to see if you have the answers. Let me find my music here, and we'll uh, do an impromptu right. game of athlete or porn star. All right. First of all, go Bucks. No what? Go Bucks. That's right. Go Bucks. I don't even know what that means, but let's go Bucks. No, go Bucks. Go Buckeyes. Oh, right. Go Buckeyes. Of course. <laughs> Sorry. I forget. Yeah, that's right. Jim is always wearing a Ohio State hat when he's on the show. All right. Here we go. Yeah. 
Uh, tonight, let me see what your prize is tonight here, uh, Jeff. How about a extra long, easy hook from uh, the folks over at uh, Barbecue Hooks? That would be awesome. A $20 value, yours for free, to show me if you are a true perv professional and jock all at the same time. Uh, all right. Here is your first name, athlete or porn star, Sarah Vandella, athlete or porn star. Porn star. That is absolutely right. Sarah Vandella is a porn star. <laughs> all right. Next name for all of the marbles, which is, of course, that easy hook we were just talking about. Dolly Buster, athlete or porn star. She is definitely a porn star. <laughs> absolutely. You figured out my whole deal there. <laughs> Damn it. I thought I was going to have you. Now, wait a second. You said something very telling there, Jeff. You said absolutely a porn star because you're a fan? Uh, she's actually a sponsor of Sweet Smoke You. Of course she is. <laughs> Jeff bringing it strong tonight, winning all the prizes and bringing high comedy to the stage. Jeff will be here all week, everybody. Be sure to tip your waitress. <laughs> All right, uh, Jeff, so all you need to do is send me your uh, shipping info um, and send that all over right. to greg at the BBQ Central Show.com and uh, we'll get you hooked up with that easy hook. All right, greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. At the BBQ Central Show.com, that's right. Oh, the. Yeah, don't forget all the. Right. It goes nowhere. Or just, you know, go to the main website and look up where it says contact me and or ask your brother for my freaking email address for crying out loud. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's probably yeah, a good I, idea. I keep telling him to call you, but he's so humble he won't call you in for your yeah. open spot. So. Well, that's all right. We'll see. Maybe he'll man up. You never know. All right. Thanks for calling in tonight, Jeff. Appreciate it. All oh, right, buddy. Jeff Elser, the uh, PR, uh, pre- the president of uh, public relations with uh, Sweet Smoke Q. And I love this jam. This is my jam right here. Not even going to lie. Oh, I'm a barbecue man. You've tuned into the Barbecue Central Show. It's the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecuing and grilling. Broadcasting live from Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Uh, Jeff wins an easy hook. I do have a bunch of those to actually give away here, so we'll go ahead and make sure that we dole those out here over the next few weeks. Still to come tonight, Roland Neal from uh, Mrs. Griffins. On the show next week, the second Tuesday of every month, brings none other than the creator of AmazingRibs.com, Meathead Goldwyn. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, also joining me, a man who is dominating the TV and now radio airwaves. I call him the BMC. You know him as Big Mo Kesa. Boomba. I am getting a text message from my sister, Katie, saying, can you send me that MP3 of the background song? I know. It's the best song ever. I will uh, get that to you. Send me an email, Katie, otherwise I'll forget. The 2014's Sam's Club series rolled into Marietta, Georgia this past weekend. This was a local event qualifier, seeing, as they always, the top six teams move on to the South Haven, Mississippi Regional Final, which will take place on September 6th. Those top six teams getting the nod to move on to South Haven. Winning it, grand champion, Pig Whisperers. Uh, Reserve grand champion, Curly Tails Barbecue. Number three, Tenacious Q. Four, Killer Bees Barbecue, which I I believe is the current defending champion overall of uh, Sam's Club. Number five, look at these guys building some of the most prolific off, uh, offset smokers available on the market anywhere in the world. Lang barbecue smoker. Shout out to Lang. P.S. I've asked Lang to be on the show like uh, 7,000 times. No. No, no thanks. 
I still I still will have you on. Ben Lang, I will have you on anytime you want to come on. I want to talk about fire. I want to talk about the reverse flow. I want to talk about all this stuff. When you got time for me, I got time for you. If you know Ben, let Ben know I'm looking for. Rounding out the top six and moving on to the South Haven Regional Final. Hogs Gone Wild Georgia. And as I mentioned in the first hour, the next Sam's Club event will be in North Charleston, South Carolina on June 7th, which is this coming weekend. So good luck all the teams getting after that one. I know everybody loves... Man, you should see these guys in the chat room going after. How do you know this person? How do you know that person? Oh, she was great. Uh, Loved her in Lord of the G-String. Or was that Goodwill Humping? (laughs) Jeff Elser. Loved her in Edward Penis Hands. All right. Watch out. Next week, I believe, on the show, we're going to be doing, if you have a, especially if you have a pellet cooker, you want to spend extra special attention to your calendar, tuning in to this show next week, where we'll be doing a giveaway, courtesy of CookinPellets.com, a sponsor of the show. We will be giving away for free to a lucky winner of not athlete or porn star, but I believe we'll be doing a cheese or font, or maybe we'll do winery or rehab again. Haven't really pinpointed it down on the game. But we will be giving away to a lucky fan. No less than 80 pounds of cooking pellets from cookingpellets.com. 80 pounds. I mean, we're not talking the paltry 20-pound bag bull crap. We're talking four times that amount. 80 pounds of free pellets to a lucky winner. We're going to follow it up the week after that with no less than a 40-pound bag to a winner. So coming up here over the next two weeks, your chance to win free barbecue pellets for your pellet-driven cookers. Those of you, again, that uh, have those pellet-driven cookers, you might be especially interested in making sure that you tune in and you call in when I tell you it's time. 216-220-0966. You can also email the show, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. Roland Neal coming up out of the break. But first, I'm going to talk to you about Tasty Lakes Barbecue Supply. Known for their amazing wide selection of cooker sauces, rubs, All things you need for both the Backyard Cook and the Serious Competition cooking team alike. What do they sell? Let me tell you. How about Big Green Eggs? How about Kamado Joe's? How about Primo Ceramics? How about Mac and Green Mountain Pellet Grill? How about all the Weber grills and smokers you can think of? As well as Meadow Creek smokers and cookers. They're one of the largest barbecue guru dealers in the country. And the very first to offer professional and amateur cooking classes featuring some of the top pitmasters out there right now. Also, Fred Bernardo does a lot of the classes himself. He has seen success on the competition trail. He is a pizza-making mother, a master pizza maker, has spent time over in Italy doing all of the research so he can bring back that knowledge and disseminate it across the folks, not only in Shillington, Pennsylvania, but for wherever you want to run in from. It's, it's pretty pretty neat. Call Fred Bernardo right now. Anything, call call him whatever you want, I guess. You can call him a smoke guitar player. That's what I call him. But call him at 800-677-2882 or just go over to your internet and look them up online at tastylicksbbq.com. That's tastylicks, plural, bbq.com. And don't forget that the smoke guitar player has over 150 cooking videos on the website. And a couple of them, he doesn't even try and sell you anything. I mean, he might pitch something here or there, but... It's not like high-pressure sales, ABC. It's not like that. That's Tasty Legs Barbecue Supply, beautiful downtown Shillington, Pennsylvania. I believe he has a new cooking class that will be coming up here shortly. With PA Midnight Smokers. I know there was one already with them. I believe they had an uh, encore performance that went so well. So just head on over to his website, tastylicksbbq.com, or call him 800 677 2882 
Uh, a, if you go onto the website, peruse the inventory, see what's going on, or if you just want to bypass that all together, pick up the phone, lob them a phone call, say, hey, what cookers you got on sale? What classes did you have coming up? I want to know. I'm going to be in Shillington, Pennsylvania. TastyLakes at BBQ.com, 800-677-2882. Roland Neal coming up out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Two one six two two zero zero nine six six. That is the phone number. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. That is the email address. This portion of the Barbecue Central Show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com. We'll be doing the giveaway with them over the next two weeks. Your number one source for quality wood pellets for all your pellet driven cookers. Visit pellet uh, visit Cookin Pellets, not you know, C O O K I N. CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase. You can also visit their Amazon.com page to purchase as well. For a limited time, anyone that mentions the Barbecue Central show in the comments box when placing an order will get a free CookinPellets.com hat. $20 value. Good on all orders placed in the uh, next uh, week or so, I believe it is. Take it for what it's worth. You want a free cap? Go to CookinPellets.com. You want free pellets? Tune in over the next couple weeks. My next guest just might have one of the oldest barbecue sauce companies in the country. Definitely the oldest sauce in Georgia. So you know there has to be a good story behind it. Let's go ahead and race over to the hotline as we uh, welcome in first-timer to the show, uh, Roland Neal joining me. Roland, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good, Greg. How are you doing tonight? Doing absolutely fabulous, Roland. Appreciate you making time for the show. And uh, I guess before we delve into the intricacies of uh, Mrs. Griffin's barbecue sauce, uh, perhaps maybe a little background about yourself personally and uh, maybe professionally. Uh, well, I um, actually got bought the company about five years ago. I'm the third owner. Uh, the family started it in 1935, uh, and then there was an owner in between myself, and, um, you know, I've just always enjoyed barbecuing, and uh, it was a dream come true being able to get Miss Griffin's. When you look at Mrs. Griffin's from a, a research aspect, you know, you see, as you had mentioned, that has been around since the mid-30s. Uh, what kind of a of a history does the sauce have? How was it started, and, uh, you know, how has it kind of evolved over the years? Oh, that's a great question. It's, uh, the uh, Griffin family had relatives from South Carolina that used to come visit them in Georgia, and they would bring down a mustard sauce, and the Griffins that lived in Georgia would uh, put some tomato in it to... Uh, kind of mild it down from being a straight mustard sauce, and that's kind of how the sauce was born. So it was all kind of done around a family picnic. It's kind of like how a lot of sauces are born, I guess. Uh, you know, you bring something to a picnic or uh, you have something that you craft just in the kitchen and, and people start adding to it or, or taking away from it, or you give a recipe out and, uh, to somebody and they make it their own. How does the sauce go from being that backyard sauce to actually getting into stores and, and I guess coming to market, if you will? Uh, it's a very, very determined um, workaholic type thing. I mean, you just hammer hammer the stores. Uh, we're a smaller local regional barbecue sauce, and, uh, you know, everybody in the area kind of knows who we are, and uh, you just kind of grow out your business. And, um you know, you work it hard enough and long enough, and sooner or later it starts working. You know, it seems there's been like a, a number of sauces that have been out there forever, but I couldn't probably name even one or two that have been around uh, since 1935 and uh, still seeing success. 
Um, you know, what do you attribute to that longevity uh, and having that name brand be around for so long? You would figure maybe over a 40 year span or so it might eventually go off to the corner and, and die. Or uh, even though it's changed a couple of hands, somebody might have screwed with it too much and uh, changed it. And, and all of a sudden it's been lost in favor, but it doesn't seem to be the case here. Well, I think there's a good reason for that. I think we just got good barbecue down here in Georgia. I mean, we were uh, <laughs> we were just rated number one by TripAdvisor for having the best barbecue in the United States, and I couldn't agree with them more. Georgia? Um, yeah. If you Google TripAdvisor barbecue in Georgia, there was a list of all 50 states, and they rated Georgia number one, North Carolina number two, and I think Texas number three. Um. But we were real proud of that, and uh, we think uh, we think we were one of the reasons that uh, Georgia was rated so high. We're a quintessential mustard tomato paste blend sauce. Let me ask you something: When TripAdvisor rates Georgia as having the best barbecue in the country, uh, I don't. I mean, obviously, there's some really great barbecue competitors that come out of Georgia. Myron Mixon comes to mind. Uh, Bubba Latimer comes to mind uh, amongst many others. There's some great competitions down there in the Georgia area. But I don't know if I would necessarily consider Georgia to be uh, what we would refer to as a mecca of barbecue, such as uh, the Carolinas or Texas or Memphis or Kansas City. So in your opinion, having spent uh, obviously a lot of time down there and you know Georgia barbecue, what is the quintessential Georgia barbecue when you compare it to some of those other regions? Oh, that's a great question. And uh, all those Bubba and Bubba's Grills and Myron and Michael Nixon are all good friends of ours. Uh, they're all from right here in the area. Uh, Georgia barbecue sauce is a blend of the vinegar that comes out of North Carolina, the mustard that comes out of South Carolina. And as you move closer going to Texas, it, the sauce tends, to, the brands of barbecue sauce tend to get a little redder with the tomato paste or the ketchup. So what I believe that makes Georgia barbecue sauce so special is the unique blend of all the ingredients. And Miss Griffin's has kind of been in business since 30, 1935. It's kind of the one that the, the rules were written around. And we're um, mostly mustard, no ketchup, but tomato paste, a little tomato paste, and then our secret herbs and spices and Gosh, I just I think that's what makes us special. I think we got a got good barbecue down here, the best in the country. And you said no ketchup? Uh, no ketchup in Miss Griffin's, no. We use all uh we use a little bit of tomato paste with our mustard and um you know, our, our secret secret spices and uh you know, white vinegar. Why um you, you know, I, I like to, to understand flavors and, and profiling, but you know, ketchup would seem to be a, a fairly uh, popular uh, thing to put in a, a barbecue sauce. Why do you choose a tomato paste uh, versus a ketchup? Well, a tomato paste is going to have a lot less sugar. Uh, and barbecue sauce down in this neck of the woods is not quite as, as sweet as some of the other, you know, especially going towards Texas, St. Louis, some of those other places. So uh, ours is a little bit thinner, a little bit less sweet and um you know we just think it's the perfect blend kind of we we call it putting stuff in your mouth down here so that's what we like uh, roland neal joining me here on the show uh mrs griffin's barbecue sauce company the website by the way mrs griffins.com uh, if you want to place a phone a uh, phone order you can do that as well uh, by calling the 800 number which is 800 749 Five nine zero nine. So, you know, as uh, the years pass and the decades pass, uh, you're seeing success in retail stores. But you know, the next step up is the bigger, like box stores. When did the sauce get into those? You know, really big retail outlets. Um, basically, we're in uh, about four Sam's. We're in Savannah, um, Pooler, Albany, and Macon, and uh, we got into the ones besides making about three or four years ago. Um, but we've been in making Sam's since, uh, Sam's came to making. So we were, we were a charter member of that and that's, it's a big seller for us. So they're, they're, you know, Walmart is tough, tough business, but they do sell, sell a lot of sauce and, uh, we appreciate their business. 
you know, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Walmart because, you know, I'm sure there's a, a lot of, let's say, small to, to mid-sized businesses, uh, and, and I guess especially the ones that might be on a little bit of a smaller scale that see Walmart as like a main goal and the thing that might really put them over the top, if you will. So having experience with them as you do, what do you have to do in order to sell into Walmart? What are they looking for? And perhaps what expectations should a business have looking to do that? Well, you're going to have to have all your insurance in order, and you're probably going to have to have a, a safety audit by uh, somebody to check your plan to make sure that you're doing everything correctly and cleanly. Um, they're just they're they're hard business people, but they're good business people, and uh, just as you would expect the largest company in the world to be. Um, and and they're tough. I mean, every day I was in one today, and. Um, Probably going to one tomorrow, you know, trying to straighten out a little problem, see what he moved us around to. Um, sometimes careful what you wish for. I mean, they're they're um, they're hard to deal with, but they're good to deal with. Do uh, I've heard, and no better uh, person to ask since you're actually dealing with with Walmart. I've heard that uh, you have to give them product, and then they don't pay you until it's actually sold off the floor. How does the the actual uh, business transaction with Walmart take place? Well, I. Um, I'm not sure that I can agree with that um, statement you made. They uh, they can. I mean, if they don't sell it, they, they are Walmart. They could force you to take it back. But um, <laughs> they do pay us in, in a set number of days. Roland Neal joining me here on the show. So as you get into Walmart and, and you get in these uh, bigger uh, kind of regional stores like a Sam's and so forth, as you look for I mean, you've been in business 1935. There's been a couple owners before you. What's your outlook 5, 10, and, and 30 years from now in, in regards to the sauce? Would you like to see it get well across the country? Are you happy with kind of where you're at? What's the business vision? Well, the business vision uh, for us, we've, we've always been a regional barbecue sauce to move more into the Atlanta metro area, which we've done. We just were uh, successful in getting in the Kroger warehouse, which took us into – a lot more stores, and we don't have to deliver those ourselves now. It goes on the Kroger trucks. You know, we would like to branch out more throughout the southeast, and hopefully, um, as people try us and like us around the country, then, you know, who knows? The sky could be the limit. Um, we certainly put a lot of effort into it, and we think we got a great product. So we try as hard as we can. Obviously, the sauce is doing very well, very popular down there. Uh, and the history speaks for itself. Has there ever been any thought given to uh, other f- flavors in the line, or is it just uh, kind of stand with uh, the one that brought you? No, we have actually we have three flavors. We have our original, and then we have a hot, which is uh, has a little bit of cayenne pepper added to it, and we also have a smoke. So we have uh, three different flavors. And we stay pretty close to our roots on that. I mean, we 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 like our sauce. We you know we we've never been a big fan of sweet sauce, so we stay we stay very close on um, our flavors. Um, and I saw. Uh, I'm not necessarily a huge country fan, but I can appreciate the uh, artistry that goes into it. Uh, but the fairly big guy on the country scene has shown. Uh, holding a bottle of Mrs. Griffin's, that being Jason Aldean, was that just uh, kind of a, the fact that he loves it and he just had it on him? Uh, was that a, a nice promo event? How does that come about? Uh, it's a funny story. Jason Aldean is from Macon, Georgia, also also the Almond Brothers. But Jason Aldean actually worked at Miss Griffin's when he was 14, 15 years old. <laughs> His uncle was a manager for a number of years. And uh, he was doing a benefit in Nashville, and uh, the governor's office for Georgia wanted to cook him some Georgia barbecue, and he requested Miss Griffin's. Um, he's been a longtime fan of ours, and we appreciate him uh, taking time to take the picture with the bottle. Uh, Roland, for some people out there that uh, maybe they're they're very small scale. Um, sauce company and you know obviously you're not uh you know huge casey masterpiece uh scale i guess but uh definitely bigger than a lot of folks out there that listen to this show maybe they want to step up production or, or look at to take it to the next level what are some things in a business aspect or a business acumen that folks need to have in line before they try and take it to that next level 
probably for the smallest of the companies, they're going to have to figure out delivering it probably to the back door and filling the shelves themselves, which is called basically DSD grocery, where you direct store delivery. It's probably not going to go through the warehouse. Um, and that's the biggest challenge. And, of course, the other biggest challenge is getting the customer to take it to buy it from the shelf so you've got a reason to go to the store at 5 in the morning. Um, that's kind of... I would think would be the biggest step coming up. You know, it seems over the last uh, 10 years or so, you've seen a lot of um, uh, independent grocery stores go by the wayside in uh, a Publix or a Kroger or um, H-E Butt or Giant Eagle up here where I am in the in the Cleveland area uh, has really dominated, which to me would seem to make it a lot more difficult to a scale into a store like that and perhaps even more importantly, find a, a point of contact to talk about selling your your sauce into getting that uh, face-to-face appointment. Uh, how about some uh, maybe some some advice on how to, to make those initial contact with some of those bigger outlets? Uh, I think you've probably got to, the first thing you would do is get real friendly with your local store manager. He's going to know who you need to talk to and who could you basically got to get it authorized in the store, um, which would probably come from, the headquarters, Kroger would be Cincinnati, Walmart would be Benton. And then um, once you got it authorized, then you could hopefully get some space in the store, which is um, basically how, you know, it was done at Miss Griffin's. Roland Neal is the uh, president and CEO of uh, Mrs. Griffin's Barbecue Sauce Company. Again, the website is uh, Mrs. Griffins.com, MRS Griffins.com, and you can uh, place phone orders. Uh, tonight, pick up the phone, 800 749 5909. Uh, Roland, do you know of any teams uh, that might be using Mrs. Griffins? Maybe they're specific to the Atlanta area or the Georgia area that uh, maybe they don't you know, get outside of that region too much, but use it in uh, barbecue competitions and do well with it? Oh, yeah. We know, we know a lot of my. Um... I don't want to tell their secrets. Um, well, Miss Griffin's is used as a base uh, throughout the competitions. It's a, you know, it's got that mustard and and uh, tomato paste base. So uh, I hear a lot of people mixing it with the little cattle lines. Um Yeah, we have the big pig jig down here. You're always going to see some empty Miss Griffin's gallons around the dumpster. So we know uh, we know what's going on. But that's okay. We're we're proud of that. And um, you know, it's um, you know Myron and Michael Nixon are, are good friends of ours, and uh, we enjoy all the, the things that they brought, the, the attention they brought to Georgia barbecue sauce and Georgia barbecue in general. And uh, you know, it's uh, Georgia is a good place to be for barbecue. Absolutely, and it's got the oldest barbecue sauce in the state right there, and we got the uh, president on the phone right now, Roland Neal. Roland, really appreciate the time. Continued success with the product. Sounds great. You know, uh, one last thing, Greg, yep. on the uh, website, I actually think our Facebook page may, descri- may describe the product better. We're always updating it almost daily. So I'd invite people to go to the uh, Miss Griffin's Barbecue Sauce Facebook page, too. And uh, I just really appreciate you having me on tonight. It's absolutely my pleasure, Roland, and uh, we'll talk soon. Appreciate it. Thank you, Greg. Bye-bye. There he is, Roland Neal, Mrs. Uh, Griffin. Check out Mrs. Griffins, plural, Mrs. M-R-S-G-R-I-F-F-I-N-S.com, Mrs. Griffins.com, to uh, check that sauce out and then visit their Facebook page, as he said. Phone orders, 800-749-5909. Has anybody had uh, Mrs. Griffins in the chat room? I don't know if uh, a lot of people are down there. Maybe uh, maybe uh, Elsa might have had uh, Mrs. Griffins. A lot, of the, a lot of the guys in the chat room are more Midwest-based, I would say. Man, the audio stream is absolutely jam-packed right now, and I am humbled. Probably because the video side of things uh, might not be working that well, but nevertheless, that's why I always say, good to have choices. If one side isn't working one week, you always have the choice of the other. That's why we have choices, spice of, uh, spice of life. I'm in Georgia, but never had it. Adam Pace, wow. Jim Elser, nope, only sweet smoke. I'm sorry, that's Jeff Elser. Of course it is. PR manager of Sweet Smoke here. No on David, no on Sylvie. Sylvie, I don't think it's out on the West Coast. So, 
You're going to have to order by phone. I'm going to order. I'm going to do a sauce review unsolicited. To Roland's chagrin or happiness. We'll see. I'll do it right here on the show. I love mustard sauce. I like uh, a, a tomato-based sauce as well. I like vinegar. Doesn't sound sweet, so you know I'm all about it all of a sudden. Maybe maybe not so much on the one that said smoky on it, or smoke sauce. What? Do you need a great gift idea for Dad? We talked about it with Stephen DeFranco on The Watch. How about a cooker, a cook shack smoker, or a pellet grill? Make that a barbecue genius with the easy-to-use smokers and pellet grills. Now until June 13th, you can save 10% off the list price of any Cook Shack residential electric smoker, Fast Eddie's by Cook Shack, FEC 100, or pellet grills. That's a savings of up to $419, depending on the unit. The Smokette, the SM009-2, the Smokette Elite, which is SM025, the Smokette, or the Super Smokette Elite, the SM045. And the AmeriQ, the SM066, are the electric smokers that make it easy to get real wood smoke to your foods. They're inexpensive to operate, energy efficient. Then, of course, you have the PG-1000 and the PG-500 pellet grills. They feature four-zone cooking and pellet broiler technology. Of course, the old standard flagship product, the FEC 100, is the choice of many championship barbecue teams. And a lot of backyard people have it, too. Guaranteed to hold enough barbecue for all your friends and family and competitions. All their products come with that. No risk. 30-day money-back guarantee. You buy it. You try it. For 30 days. You know, you could cook 30 times in that thing if you only use it once a day. On the weekend, man, you could be blowing that thing up. And then after 30 days, if you don't like it, call them up. Dial them up on them telephones and say, take it back. Can't like it. You have nothing to lose. To order, use the promo code DAD14, that's DAD14, when you check out at CookShack.com or call CookShack at 800-423-0698 and tell the friendly sales staff you want the DAD14 deal. You can save up to $419. Hello? Is this thing on? You want to save $419? Use DAD14 when you call 800-423-0698 or visit CookShack.com and enter promo code dad 14 deal ends friday june 13th that's a week from friday i'll remind you again one more time next week all right you join me on the backside. ask me questions so i'll give you questions we'll go back and forth this is an open segment stick around we'll be right back Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. Who would have thought this music thing was going to go this far? I never asked for this. I never asked for this fast living. The women, the whiskey. All right, 216 220 0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com is the uh, number and email address to get in touch with the show. Dave Bosca, the FEC 100 has won the Barbecue Pitmasters. I know. Of course you did. He won it. I got this email from. With well, with every fiber of my being, I want this to be Matt Damon, like actor Matt Damon, but I'm sure it's not. As a matter of fact, I probably know it's not. I don't think Matt Damon has a Gmail address. But nevertheless, I'll continue to believe what I want, and you can't make me. Ramps. Wow. First of all, I haven't had a ramps pull in like. Since I've been in high school, 92, senior year, 92, can't say, Obama, holla. I haven't had anybody call me Remps in 30 years. Wow, that's great. Good pull. Remps, first of all, love the show. Been listening for a long time. Really enjoy your interviews with barbecue industry folks the best. Now that I'm done blowing you. Uh-oh. What? Matt. 
necessary? I don't think so. Just ask away. Anyway, I digress. Now that I'm done blowing you, I have a question. When you did your Memorial Day cook with the brisket flat, how did you mix your butcher's injection? So far, I have used one-third cup mix. That would be the injection mix. One can beef consomme and apple juice to make 20 ounces. I liked the results in the past. I used a different brand and found that full strength gave a strange taste. Just curious. Thanks for your time. Well, let me just say this. Beef consomme. What the hell is that? Beef consomme. I have the bully of both. Uh, how did I make my butcher's injection? Well, um, I can tell you exactly, actually, how I did it. Stand by. All right. Back. Now, for those of you that don't really think I have this stuff in my house or that I buy it, uh, you're absolutely incorrect. It's right here. Butcher's Barbecue uh, Original Brisket Injection. Suck it and suck it double if you don't think I have it. And I'm almost out. That's fine. Uh, Butcher's Barbecue Original Injection. How do I make it? Let me tell you how I make it. I follow the directions. Mixing directions. For two... 12-pound briskets combine three-quarter cup of the injection with two cups of water and mix well. With a small injector, inject the mix throughout the whole brisket by using a grid pattern. Try to get the injection into the center of the meat for best results. Inject and let set for four hours before cooking. For more details, visit our FAQ page on website butcherbbq.com. After mixing, refrigerate till used. That's how I do it. So, nothing uh, special or crazy or anything like that. I Look, I think if um, my wife was guessing on the show tonight and we were to have this conversation, she would be able to fully prove or or fully uh, assert my statement that I'm about to make. Uh, When it comes to cooking something once or twice, if it works, well, let me, if I'm cooking something once and there's a recipe, uh, I'm not a guy that will deviate from the recipe at all. I will follow the recipe to the exact inch, to the measurement, to everything. Because I want to know how it's originally supposed to taste. And then once I've made it once... I'll decide, well, I can use a little bit more of this or a little less of that or add more beef or add more chicken or or whatever the case may be. But the very first time, I will never, not even for one second, deviate from the recipe. Likewise, when I am injecting my brisket with Butcher's Barbecue Original Brisket Injection, because I happen to know the guy that makes it, because I've seen his success, I've tasted his product live and in person. Why would I deviate from the directions? I mean, he uses this stuff in competitions. I'm sure, uh, you know, a lot of people use it in the catering, stuff like that. You know, I just want to make sure that, you know, for the few times, and I said it last week, or maybe it was two weeks ago, beef barbecue in this house just doesn't, you know, go over as well as pork and chicken. It just does. You know, I'm a man on an island out here. I need brisket all the time. But the girls don't really like it that much. That's their palate. I trust my palate. They trust their palate. I'm here to not offend the women as much as possible. Sometimes it doesn't work out. As a matter of fact, a lot of time that doesn't work out. But I try. So to give myself the best opportunity, I mix or I inject my brisket because I want to give myself a a moist product. I want to add uh, extra flavor down in there. Um, I don't get a, a fake beef flavor when I use a butcher's barbecue injection, so I don't have to, uh, I don't know if mask is the right word, 
but I don't use like a a, a beef consomme or a, a beef broth or anything like that to mix the actual uh, mix the actual mix itself. I guess I would tell you that if you've never had Butcher Barbecue product, this by the way isn't just an unsolicited testimonial, but I was this was an email question. That if you uh, spend five seconds on the website, you buy the uh, butcher's barbecue injection, buy the uh, the, the the can or you know, the uh, the measuring uh, the portable measuring thing. It gives you the exact measurements on where you need to pour the uh, the mix into, how much liquid you had to have to have on top of that. Boom, you shake it. And let me tell you something. Um, I use a, a fairly decent size um, measuring uh, cup. Not a cup, but it's just like an eight-cup measuring thing. And I put the, the mix in there, and I put the water in there, and I mix it up. And uh, like in a, a lot of like a instant uh, make, like uh, pastas and stuff like that, uh, the mix itself, like the powder stuff, is absolutely ridiculous to actually get to like melt down and, and dissolve. I think inside of 25 to 40 seconds, mixing with a fork... It was all dissolved. It was ready to go inside of a minute uh, maximum. If you're just lazily stirring, it, it'll go, it, it will all dissolve in a minute. So, you know, it mixes well. Uh, I would, uh, again, recommend the mixing container. If you're on the website, butcherbbq.com. Uh, if you don't have an injector, uh, Dave has injectors there. I mean, it's really a one stop shop for injections, uh, but that's how I do it. I do it according to the directions right there on the back, and I'm not even kidding. It worked for me the first time I tried it, and every other time I've done brisket, I've done it exactly like that, and I've had no problem. Thank you, Dave. Oh, thank you. Uh, also, thanks to Matt for writing in. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, give me your thoughts on the show and ask me a question. Uh, by the way, uh, I would mention in the top of the second hour that we're going to be doing a substantial giveaway with wood pellets coming up here over the next couple weeks. And this past weekend, I did a very large chicken cook and an impromptu barbecue that I had with the neighbors. And I got to tell you, I moved into the palatial new estates, the Barbecue Central Network Studios. And victory for me, not only with the house finally being completed, my neighbors are the best. Annie and Desmond are the best. Just great people, our age, similar station in life. Little kid, they got a little kid. My kids are, you know, bigger. But they like my kids, and we hang out, and we run jello shots over to each other and get all effed up. It's great. Best neighbors ever. But I finally got to use uh, those uh, 80 pounds of pellets that uh, Chris Baker sent me from cookingpellets.com. And first thing I noticed right off the bat is that, the A, the packaging is great. No potential of the bag breaking open. Plus, you can see right through it, so there's really no way of hiding if the pellets have disintegrated or if the integrity of the pellet isn't there. So it disintegrates as it's being handled during shipping. And... I like the fact that the length and the uh, consistency and the size of the pellet was there. Uh, there weren't a lot of like extra long ones. You get the long pellets, you have potential for bridging in the auger if your auger isn't uh, good at eating pellets. And look, don't let anybody tell you that using some other pellet in your pellet cooker is going to void the warranty. If that's a condition, don't buy that freaking cooker. That company should have done research and development, time and effort, into making sure an auger can push any pellet that's out there. So if you're buying uh, or you're considering buying a pellet cooker that says, hey, uh, you can only use X brand of pellets, otherwise you're going to void your warranty. Tell them to beat it. (laughs) Out of all of the pellet cookers out there, And there are more coming by the second to choose from. You should never choose one that's going to tell you or that's going to dictate what pellet you should choose. They shouldn't give a shit 
about what pellets you're putting in the pellet cooker. Sure, it's a, a revenue stream if the company makes it, but a lot of those companies don't even make their own pellets. It's all uh, privately branded by only, a, I mean, there's probably only a small handful of actual pellet makers out there. Uh, soon enough, when uh, Chris has the time, we're going to be talking to Chris from cookandpellets.com, talk about his process and why uh, he feels his pellets are different. He's obviously smart. You know, he wants to sponsor the show. Who am I to say no? All right. We're going to uh, come back and wrap up this show here after this. Hey, I just got done talking about them, and wouldn't you know it, Butcher's Barbecue, time to read. That's right, folks. If you've never had it, here's a, a quick look at it in its original packaging uh, from you know the last order. Butcher's Barbecue original brisket injection. Of course, Butcher's known for those injections. The original, as I just mentioned, the pork and the prime injection, of course. The injection that is... You know, could be the best-selling one out there on the market right now is that Bird Booster in a number of different flavors. And what's the biggest bitch that people have about chicken? Eh, it doesn't taste like anything, or I have to over-season it to push flavor into it, or after the skin, I get no flavor. You know, let's stop your whining. Go to Butcher's Barbecue, ButcherBBQ.com, and buy Bird Booster. Pick out a flavor you think is going to work best for you, and then start injecting your chicken with Bird Booster. Here's some things that's going to happen. When you use Bird Boost, A, the moisture that is retained in your bird is going to be roughly three times more than you would normally get it if you were to brine a whole bird or brine pieces of chick. Uh, 7% on a brine, up to 21%, I believe, when you're using the Bird Boost because you're getting it all in there. Plus, you have the opportunity to jam flavor inside. So now you really have no complaints about if you're going to be eating chicken a lot because maybe you're uh, changing up your diet or uh, you want to burn a couple pounds, whatever the fact may be, and you're going to have to move away from some of the fatty stuff and get into more chicken. Yeah, well, no more complaining about how bland it is. You have the option of adding flavor deep within the meat flesh of the chicken now, thanks to Dave Bosca and the gang over at Butcher's Barbecue. ButcherBBQ.com, of course, aside from all those wonderful injections, you do have the sauces and the rubs. And much like uh, actor Matt Damon, who just wrote in, if you tried somebody else's injection and you are dissatisfied or the scores have tumbled or the high fives from the neighbor, eh, they don't come as frequently anymore. In the past, you had to throw that injection out. You wasted money. Your wife's pissed because you could have took her out on the town or at least got her a $10 dinner box from McDonald's. You're just screwed. Not anymore. Go to the main website, butcherbbq.com. Click on trade-in link. Yeah, print off the sheet there. Send the commercially made remaining product that you have left from that other injector maker, injection maker. Send it to Dave. He'll weigh it in return. And at your request, he'll send you back either the pork, the beef, the prime, or the bird boost. Just that easy. Trying to make his customers happy, which he does a very good job at, but trying to make competition's customers happy as well when they've realized that making the switch or the grass was greener. We, we all know that grass is greener until you waste your money and you have your pissed wife at looking for you. Don't want that. ButcherBBQ.com. That's ButcherBBQ.com. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampy. Big B, new sound band, Let's go! I'm an outlaw. Give me two shots. We don't need a radio. Bring a jukebox for my outlaws. Bring me three shots. We can raise hell before the speed stops. I'm a whiskey drinking SOB. If you don't like that, then you won't like me. I'm an outlaw. I said I'm an outlaw. Drive up the Harley, now I'm off to Cali to do my thing. Rolling down the 15 full speed splitting. All right, welcome back. 216-220-0966. That's the phone number, Greg, at the BBQCentralShow.com. That is the email address. I see Scotty Walton in the uh, chat room. Scotty, are you off shift? You're not fixing uh, planes or anything anymore? What's going on? Get a reprieve back on the show? 
asking how you mix it. Um, I used a, a spoon, but I had a big, you know, big mixing bowl. Uh, I've used a whisk in the past. Um, I can tell you that uh, after my own behest to saying get a mixing container, I'm going to get a mixing container because that's probably going to be the easiest way. Plop it in, shake it up, boom, there you go. Uh, don't forget that coming up on the show next week, Meathead will be joining us. We don't have topics set just yet, but soon enough we'll be uh, ready to educate and entertain. And where is the, uh, oh, where did that go? Recent. There's Donnie. Oh, it's still up here. Yeah, well, there you go. That's why I don't have it. Um, Mo Kason from Ponderosa Barbecue. Uh, here's what I find, you know, and I got a ton of email, you know, it figures. I do the rant. Are, are we talking barbecue right now, Jeff? What? Say what? Um, I did the rant on, well, I didn't do a rant. I answered a question. Somebody asked me, if you were a producer of uh, barbecue pit masters, what would you change? And I said, well, I would just eliminate the whole thing as it sits, and I, this is how I would redo it. Well, as luck would have it, Evidently, there is a show, which I believe uh, Patio Daddy uh, linked it up. I just wasn't paying attention. Uh, is the like Barbecue Pit Wars or something like that. So you have uh, Mo Kason, you have Myron Mixon, you have Michael Character, and you have Stump McDowell. Doing, I believe, competitions within competitions, but uh, I haven't seen it. I forgot to set the uh, DVR for it this past Saturday. I believe maybe it's on Sunday. But... No less than 20 emails saying, oh, yo, the the show that you want, it's on the air right now. Barbecue Pit Wars or whatever. So I'm going to have to check that out and see if that's the one that I am I need to be watching. I think, and we're right up against the Barbecue Pit Masters uh, finale. I believe uh, Robbie Royal has moved on to the finals there, and there's probably going to be two other final rounds or, or uh, semis before you get into the final cook. Scotty Walton saying the Barbecue Pit Wars show is pretty good. Stumps is hilarious. <laughs> I don't want to ask Scotty, but is, is Stump hilarious because he's funny? Or is Stump hilarious because you find his accent to be funny? Uh-oh. If it's the second one, come on. I've had Stump on this show once many years ago. Uh, I found him to be very knowledgeable about pit making. Would love to have him on again. If he's funny because he's funny, that's one thing. If he's funny because you think he talks funny, that's different. You can't have that. I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, All right, let's uh, go ahead and do a show wrap-up, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Uh, We'll get out of here all the way back in the first hour. We talked with Donnie Bray. WarrenCountyPorkChoppers.com is his website. And he... uh, Jeff Elser, Rempe, next time I'm home in Ohio, may I do the show with you? Yeah, bring it. I have people in the show. You from Cleveland? You're probably from Columbus because you're so Buckeye honkish. Uh, anyway, we talked with uh, Donnie Bray, Warren County Pork Choppers, reviewed the uh, first half of this season, looked ahead a little bit to the remaining six months, gave us some good insight on uh, things that he has changed, things that he will be tweaking, teams that he is uh, looking to stave off to grab that 2014 Team of the Year KCBS championship. Then we talked with Harry DeHorse about the impending, the impending Belmont Stakes horse race will be coming off on Saturday. Get your bets down. California Chrome, the newest hopeful of Triple Crown Hope, carrying the weight of a nation and a world on his four shoulders. And then in the second hour, we uh, visited with Roland Neal from Mrs. Griffin's. Again, Mrs. Griffin's. Dot com, And you can order by phone 800-749-5909. Oldest barbecue sauce in Georgia. Hey, how about that? And then uh, we uh, piddle paddled around there for the last segment. Appreciate you hanging out. Uh, next week, great show planned. If you have raw cast iron, reseason it each and every time. 
As it starts to cool down, hit it with a grill brush and then a little pan, a little Crisco. I re-season mine each and every time. Generations of rust-free service will avail itself to you. Also, September 11, 2001. I'll never forget it. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.